Good evening, everyone. It is Monday, April 1st, 11th, 2022. <laughs> this is Cricket Lot, and between me, Hiawatha, and Gwen, we are your hosts this evening. Oh, and Jean, we are your um, hosts for the evening on um, the Healthy Lifestyle Group. So we're going to get started. We're going to show a video and stop it as we go along. It's the 10 10 most 10 vegetables you should always grow. So um, I'm going to share my screen, I think. And come on. Here we go. Share sound. Covering up my leg if it goes over too much. Okay, and if you um could uh, mute yourself so we can't hear your background music. If you're on a phone, you can mute by just using your mute button on your phone. So. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and I selected ten vegetables. Can you hear it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Where's the mute button at? Um, if you're on the phone, use your phone mute. Okay, I don't see it. What is it? Star something? Star six or something? Star eight. Star six. Star eight. Thank you. Try. Okay, try thanks. that. If Okay, here we go. ...that you should always grow based on a combination of how easy they are to grow, how versatile they are to use, how productive the crops are, how healthy they are to eat, and how good they taste. This veggie list is ranked from best to awesomeness in order of always growness. Let's get into it. Number one is lettuce. Who can't grow lettuce? I can't get rid of it. It even grows in my lawn. <laughs> lettuce is high in nutrients, but exceptionally low in calories. Lettuce is very hydrating. If you're feeling thirsty, have a drink of lettuce by eating it. Lettuce is good on its own as a salad, but it's also one of those maker foods that you don't notice until it's not there, like an egg and lettuce sandwich. The egg is the hero, but the lettuce is what makes it. Or shredded lettuce in a taco. Or how about lettuce in the base of a prawn cocktail with island sauce? Now that takes me back. <laughs> Number two is carrots. Okay, so I thought we, uh, after each vegetable, we talk about some raw food options because he obviously is not a um, healthy lifestyle person. I, I, I'm not sure, but I don't think I got that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, so, so lettuce is, like he said, is an amazingly easy crop to grow. Um, just make a tiny little um dent in the soil with your finger and sprinkle a little seeds in it and push the soil over top of it and keep it moist and see how tall this one is right here it grows like kind of up well some varieties grow up like a stalk so if you clip off the bigger bottom ones um then um it'll keep growing up this way also, um, there's kinds that grow like outwards like this and you just keep clipping the leaves and they, it just keeps growing and growing. You don't have to um, keep it going. So obviously lettuce, it can go in green smoothies. It can go, you can make a salad, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Other suggestions for lettuce? Cabbage would be part of the lettuce group, would it? Um, cabbage is separate, yeah. Okay, never mind. Okay. Okay, we're going to go on then. Number two is carrots. The reason they started Bugs Bunny 
was to get more people from a young age interested in eating carrots. That's not really true. I just made that up. <laughs> but if it was true, that'd be pretty amazing. But it is true that carrots are good for you. And although help to improve your eyesight might be a myth, the antioxidants lutein and beta carotene contained in carrots are known to help protect eyesight. Carrots have a large temperature growing range, which means they can be grown in many climates all year round. They are also very productive. I planted these carrots here four months ago and they are still producing. Carrots are a dense food, so even just a few standard sized ones or several of these small French varieties are enough to feed a family. And just like Bugs Bunny, carrots do taste nice and they can be used in so many different ways from raw to cooked and that's why they are such a worldwide sensation. Number three. Okay so carrots um when you're growing them if you don't have really loose friable soil you want to get the kind of carrots that he has that are short and stocky like that. The really long carrots need like sandy soil or real no rocks, soft no yeah no rocks no um clay soil so um and of course um carrots you, there's lots of raw vegetable raw food recipes with carrots you can um eat them raw you can shred them on top of salad you can dice them up um does someone have a favorite way they um fix carrots yeah <laughs> what yeah carrot yours cake. is cooked carrot, carrot cake. cake get out of here <laughs> <laughs> um let me oh, well craig would agree with you. yeah craig agreed with you <laughs> okay I like um to, i like to use the carrot chops i the did not i wonder yeah, I did not you... know carrot tops was, were edible until I went to Arizona and uh -huh. they were just throwing away the carrot tops. So I asked the gentleman, I said, listen, is this poisonous? He said, no. People, he said, I take them off because people are going to take them off. They aren't going to use them anyway. And I said, well, how can you use them? He said, hey, number five, it's cabbage. <laughs> but I didn't want to cook them. I said, well, what about juicing them? He said, yeah, you can make, you can blend them with water and strain them and get a lot of chlorophyll. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. Um, so this is my website. Um, it's official name is livinghiho.com, but you can also find it by cricketlot.com. And if you go on here um, and go to, um, I can't see it here because of the, go to recipes, you can um, go through the categories or you can go up here in the search and put carrots and you can see lots of different carrot recipes. So here's fiery carrots, um, cinnamon orange glazed carrots, carrots with parsley and walnuts, Carrot cake from um, Alyssa Cohen, mock salmon pate, carrot orange parsley salad, jicama salad, tastes like pumpkin pie, garden burgers have carrots in it. So, and look at, there's at least nine pages of recipes with carrots. So whenever you're looking for a recipe and you have a certain ingredient, you can go to my website and look up the previous raw food group recipes that we brought. So um, there's one way you can do that. Anybody else have a favorite recipe with carrots? So if you can juice them, I assume you can eat the carrot tops. I think they're kind of bitter though. Aren't they Hiawatha? Yes. Yeah, good. yeah. Real strong. All right, <clears throat> okay. Yes, Jean. You're muted. You are muted. Okay. My favorite way is to have lemon juice added to the carrot juice, a little bit of lemon juice in it. It tastes, 
it's it's that sour versus sweet that's really tastes ah, good. The carrot juice, not mm -hmm. the carrots themselves, not the carrot tops. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. The carrots and the and the lemon, and then my mother, you she didn't. This is not a raw recipe, but you could make your own frozen dessert with almond milk and some uh, stevia or some other fruit with it. And then you could put that in your cup and then your carrot juice and have a float. Oh, there you go. Cool. Um, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, well, must have been a lie. <laughs> oh, I like carrot apple celery juice together. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Was ist das? Das ist Wein. What's German for cabbage? Sauerkraut. Was ist das? Das ist Wein. Sauerkraut. Cabbage, we were having dinner last night, and I'll tell you a bit of a story. I made up some pickled cabbage and radish to go with a curry I knocked up. The boys and I got the pickled veg and put it on top of the curry, and I noticed Nina was enjoying her curry with just rice. And so I I told her about a study, that true story I saw yesterday, that day on the telly uh, from the University of Western Australia on 900 women who ate cabbage regularly. And it showed that those who did regularly eat cabbage were less likely to get heart disease. Nina immediately added some pickled cabbage to her plate. Cabbage isn't hard to grow, but if you run into a few problems with pests or the heads taking too long to mature, Try some mini cabbage. They don't take long from seed to harvest, but one mini cabbage still goes a long way to feed a family or make a delicious preserve such as sauerkraut. Number four is... So I've never had much luck with cabbage. I always have get those cabbage worms. And so, um, and the heads don't set up, so... I don't know, has anybody had success growing cabbage? Well, I know Keith uh, grows a lot of cabbage. He really loves growing cabbage because he likes to make that uh, sauerkraut all the time. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, I so a lot of cabbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deborah? Mine not was grown, but uh, I actually started using cabbage as a wrap, as a sandwich topper for all. Of oh yeah, the that's day. a good idea. Yeah, and yeah. I had an enjoy, oh my gosh, Greg and I are eating sandwiches like with cabbage all the time. We're going through red so now because of that. So good. Cool. Um. So the um. If you like cabbage and you wanna make your own, this perfect pickler is um, awesome. It looks a little different than, oh, that's not the same one. It, you use a regular mason jar and it uh, looks like there's several different ones now. Um, and it has this little top on it here that helps the gas, so it doesn't bubble over. Um, yeah, so you can just buy this um, this gasket here and um, put it on a mason jar and make your own cabbage. And it only takes like six days or something, seven days. It's just amazing how fast the cabbage makes with this. So if you, um, if you wanna buy something like this, I have all the recipes from the Perfect Pickler place on my computer I can send to you. So um, I'm just on Amazon scrolling through. So you can, uh, you can look on there and find things and you can pick all kinds of things, beets and cabbage and green beans and you know any kind of vegetable you want, you can pickle up, so. Okay. Moving Beetroots. On. Beetroots. That plural doesn't sound quite right. Beetroots. Let's just call them beets. It beats the sugar out of me, and I say sugar, because beetroot 
in a mix of sugar and vinegar is my favorite way to preserve and eat this fantastic vegetable. In my circle of friends, there are several who hate beetroot. And that's a shame because beets are a known superfood, meaning there has been studies done that show this vegetable may help to prevent cancer. More research needs to be done to confirm this, but it is confirmed that beetroots contain a high amount of vitamins and also minerals that are known to have many health benefits. At the same time, beets are high in fiber, low in fat and low in calories, and they are really easy to grow. Plus, you can eat the tops just like a regular leafy vegetable, which makes them really versatile and productive to grow in the home garden. Number five, so um, beets are also a great one for juicing, um, even juicing the um, top. So as the beets are growing, you can clip off a couple tops and um, throw them in your green smoothies or your juicer. Um, if you don't like eating beets um, plain, you can always, um, just shred them on top of a salad so you hardly even taste them. And um, there it seems like there was a recipe that I really liked, um, beets. Pickled turnips and beets, oh, ginger beets. That one was really good. Um, pear beet jicama salad, beet Waldorf salad from Hiawatha, beet salad with nuts, um, beet surprise, so uh, red cabbage and beet slaw. So you're getting lots of different red vegetables. So um, lots of choices there for beets too. Any comments about beets? Yeah, this is Fran. Yeah. And um, I did a, I think it was a 10 day apple, beet, carrot, lemon, ABC juice. Uh -huh. And I just did it it was somebody at creative health was doing it like maybe 10 years ago. Well, the 10th day I had a mole fall off my back. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Yeah. It was just the nutrients basically going in and get rid of stuff. And so that, that is one of my favorites, um, that, that combination. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, well, pretty what was in it, Fran? What was in it? Apple beet, ABC, apple, beet, carrot, and lemon. So. Beet, carrot, and lemon. Cool. It yeah. It good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so fun. Beets yeah. are a good blood cleanser. So um, beet juice is awesome for you. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Anyone else? Okay, let's go on, onions. Our onions. You know, when I think about onions, it brings tears to my eyes. This vegetable oh. is practically in everything from sauces to Bunnings sausage sizzles. Just remember to put the onions on the bread first. Yeah. Not for work, health and safety reasons, but because it deserves to be first. There have been a ton of medical studies into the health benefits of onions with findings such as helpful in regulating blood sugar, helps to strengthen bones, lower cholesterol, inhibit the growth of harmful bacteria in our stomach, boost the immune system, and the list goes on. Onions are a pretty hardy crop to grow with varieties to suit all climates. And if you're short on space, well, just try some spring onions. They'll grow just about anywhere even in a glass of water. Onions keep for a long time on the shelf, which makes them good for productivity. And although you'll only ever eat one, like an apple once, a good pasta sauce or sausage sizzle is not the same without it. Number six. <laughs> Onions might be helpful, but that sausage sizzle uh, leaves a little to be desired. <laughs> Oh, so onions, I don't know that we need to talk much about onions. They go in lots of things, salads and um, all kinds of different recipes. So um, there's one that Hiawatha, oh yeah, sesame, onion, and, um, 
I can't remember which kind of seaweed that was, but that one's really good. Um, do you remember that recipe, Hiawatha? Sesame no. seeds and <laughs> onions and, um, let me see here. Uh, my my uh, father the onions just like an apple. I can never figure that out, but. I know my mom used to do that too. She, mom used to work in an onion farm and um, she um, used to have onion sandwiches. Ugh. Yeah. Seaweed salad. Um, Aramie? Wakami. Aramie. Wakami. Wakami. I used to use yeah. wakami. Yeah, wakami with um, wakami. <laughs> onion and sesame seeds and wakami that was soaked and a little bit of olive oil. And I don't have to look up the, the recipe, um, but that was really good. And um, if onions are good for your bones and sesame seeds are definitely good for your bones. So, um, I don't know where Hiawatha's recipe is. I'll have to look it up. Sauerkraut salad, seaweed salad, crab cakes. I don't know. I know it's in my raw food recipes book. So, okay. Anybody got any other comments about onion? Um, my favorites are the raw onion crackers. I think those are the best ever. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about those. I haven't made those in forever. I always make them when I have onions on hand. Yeah, onions um, and um, flaxseed. And yeah, those are really good. I'm getting, I need to get back coconut to aminos. Doing yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. Okay, cucumbers. It's cucumbers. You know the saying, as cool as a cucumber? Well, in 1970, they did a study and found that the internal temperature of a cucumber was cooler than the outside temperature on a warm day. Pretty incredible, hey? Not that it's cooler, but incredible that someone would actually do a study to find that out. <laughs> Now, I know cucumbers are technically a fruit, but they're mainly eaten as a vegetable. So I'm calling it a fruitable. Cucumbers contain zero fat and are made up of about 96% water, which makes them an excellent low calorie snack for those watching their weight or constipated. Don't laugh, if you chocker up the blocker, eating cucumbers can help you get regular again. Plus, cucumbers are high in nutrients on their own, but as we know, <laughs> cukes can be prepared and preserved in tons of different ways that often enhance their health benefits, such as fermented and pickled. They even sell deliciously fermented cucumbers at Disneyland. And I can tell you from personal experience, they're Mickey Mouse. Cucumbers are relatively easy to grow and depending on the variety can be extremely productive whether you grow a climbing variety or a small bush type to save on space. Number seven. Okay, cucumbers. Tons of ways to make cucumbers. You can um, pickle them with um, dill essential oil. Um, you can... Um, just eat them plain and no kidding. If you're thirsty, eating a cucumber is just about the best thing you can do to quench your thirst. I can start a brand new recipe with cucumber salad, cucumbers and mayonnaise and uh, Himalayan sea salt and black pepper and vitality oil. And, uh -huh. and you mix it up and oh my gosh, I made cucumbers every day now. Yeah. Okay, what was that? What was that again? Um, she's, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you said um, the cucumber mayo salad. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, and you can make your own mayo with um, cashews. Yeah, or half cashews, half um, macadamia nuts is my favorite because macadamias are a little more creamy. And a little um, black pepper oil. 
and um, yeah, well, you're good to go. I put some onion in there. Oh my god! Oh yeah, cucumbers and onions. Yeah, a lot of people make the cucumbers and onions with um, mayo and sour cream. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's that uh, uh, raw food equivalent to that in the, on the uh, website. Cucumber. Cucumber avocado soup. Cucumber wakame, pickled cucumbers. Oh, there's a ton of cucumber recipes, so. Can't find it right off, but I know it's in here. Watermelon gazpacho. Well, you guys can uh, have fun um, searching through these recipes for different um, different combos of cucumbers. So I didn't know it was a fruit. Um, technically, anything that has the seeds in it is a fruit, like tomatoes, and um, so you know vegetables and fruits what you know what difference does it make <laughs> i like uh i like the cucumber spiralized better than spiralized zucchini it has like a slicker texture and it's good for like to do that with like asian type you know herbs or whatever oh okay so i actually like that better than uh, the zucchini zucchini uh -huh. kind of that weird texture almost. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Papasta, so. <clears throat> Here's peas. Shelling peas might be easy, but so is growing them. And there's not many people that don't like eating them either. And that's why peas are one of the best staples in the world today. Peas are one of those foods that taste good and are good for you because they contain lots of healthy elements including vitamin K and manganese which both can help with healing the body. As you can see, peas can be very productive with this row of snow peas producing five kilograms already and the rest of them we're going to leave to plump up so that we can shell and save the seed through freezing to eat later. Speaking of peas, number planted my snow peas today. Um, I probably should have put them in a couple weeks ago, but um, snow peas are the kind where you can eat the pod and everything. So, and they're great in like a warm soup if you want to cook a soup or they're great just to eat fresh or chop up uh, into smaller pieces in a salad. So um, I don't know of too many recipes with raw uh, of the round part of the peas. Hiawatha, have you made anything with the peas themselves? No. Yeah. Mostly peas are cooked, so. Okay, number eight is beans. Eight is beans, which are even slightly better. Beans, as most of us know, are one of the most complete foods you can grow meaning they contain so many important nutrients that you could almost survive on beans alone. And you'd want to be alone too, because if all you ate was beans, blaming the dog could become a little tiresome. <laughs> beans are not just high in fiber though. They're also high in protein and B vitamins, which help with brain and nerve function. Now bean season is coming up for us, but there are numerous varieties of beans to grow. So I'd encourage you to have a look through all the thousands of them and experiment. 
Yes, these runner beans are often the best still to grow, but try out some of those other fantastic varieties. Beans can be grown just about anywhere and are quite forgiving when it comes to soil types, making them one of the easiest vegetables to grow for beginners. And because crops of beans are easy to preserve from canning to dried, they have been an important food source for humanity for a very long time. Number nine are tomatoes. And speaking of beans... So I tried to grow beans last year and the chipmunks and, I mean, the rabbits and the groundhogs ate them all to the ground. So, um, so I guess I'm just going to have to keep buying green beans because I can't grow them. But... Um, you can pickle green beans. Uh, you can just eat them raw from the garden. Um, not a lot of raw food recipes with raw green beans, but anybody else have any suggestions for beans? Well, I like to make a raw bean salad, but what I usually do is I have to process it in the food processor. Uh, because I, I don't like to be chewing them. Uh, you know, they take a lot of chewing. Yes, they and, do. <laughs> uh, but then I like to put uh, onions with them, uh, carrots with them, and uh -huh. it really takes out very nice, but you just gotta have, take your time and chew them because they are okay. really have a lot of fiber. Yeah, okay. Anyone else? Okay, on to tomatoes. Beans. How good are baked beans in tomato sauce? A classic match. Tomatoes are another fruitable. And if I allowed my personal bias to take over, I would have tomato, it would be the top of the toppers because I personally love eating them and growing them. There has barely been a day in my life when I haven't eaten a tomato in one form or another. And lucky me, because tomatoes are probably the healthiest food you can eat, whether raw or cooked. In fact, it's one of the few foods that when cooked, the health benefits increase. Tomatoes contain lycopene, which is what makes them red, but also it's a powerful antioxidant that helps protect us against cancers and degenerative diseases, especially as we age. Tomatoes contain <laughs> vitamin C, K, potassium, <laughs> folate, and many other elements that help us from heart health right through to skin protection. Everyone should grow tomatoes because there's nothing like the taste of a homegrown heirloom tomato. They beat the supermarket varieties hands down for taste and nutrition. If you have trouble growing the large tomato varieties, then try the cherry types. They're just as good and easy to grow. Once you start, they will come up on their own each season after. I don't need to tell you how versatile tomatoes are because tomatoes are all around us every day. So get into growing some. Number 10. My niece, um, her husband, said no I don't want any tomatoes I don't like tomatoes but she gave him a tomato out of the yard that she grew and um he was like whoa this is what tomatoes taste like <laughs> so definitely homegrown tomatoes are different than tomatoes you grow in that you buy in the store so go to a farmer's market and get some local tomatoes or grow your own. You can grow tomatoes in a five gallon bucket on your, on your patio. So, um, you know, get a shorter variety and, um, you know, grow one or two tomato plants your, on your own. Um, you know, maybe do one cherry and one regular. So um, you can make, um, gazpacho with tomatoes you can just toss them in a salad you can oh my gosh there's so many like he said there's so many things you can do with tomatoes so um you can make raw pizzas with um the flaxseed dough and and use um, blended tomatoes for the sauce lots of different ways to um to use the tomatoes 
Anybody have a favorite tomato recipe? There. Well, I was going to friend who had a farm last summer, and one of the best things to do when you have too many like that, because I just kept buying them and buying them, is to dehydrate them. They taste even sweeter and better. And yeah. then I put like extra vegetables and made like soup mixes. So when I travel, all I need is some hot water and I just dump it over all that. And so that's a, a neat way to, you know, yeah. deal with all those extra tomatoes and they taste so yeah. good dry. So. And tomatoes are easy to freeze because you don't have to blanch them. You can just chop them up and throw them in a freezer bag and throw them in the freezer. So, um, and then you can eat them raw in like a gazpacho or something, or if, if you do some cooked food, you can throw them in a cooked dish. So very versatile vegetable. Okay. And last but not least, are potatoes. There's a good reason why I selected potato as my top 10 of foods that you should always grow. Because without potatoes, you would only have half a meal at McDonald's. Did you know that a potato has more potassium than a banana? Potassium is an essential electrolyte needed for optimal muscle functioning. So when you see a top athlete like Nadal eating a banana between sets, that's why. Perhaps you should maybe eat some french fries instead. Seriously, despite the bad name, potatoes are good for you, especially if you don't drown them in bad cooking fat. Yes, potatoes are high in carbs, but they are good complex carbs, not simple sugars, like say, sugar. So although nutrient dense, potatoes are still a good source of fiber, particularly if you leave the skin on, and they also have other vitamins like B6, which helps brain function and might even help with depression. That's possibly why I feel so good after eating bangers and mash with gravy. Taste is undeniable. <laughs> I challenge you to find a better tasting vegetable. And if you grow your own, they are even better because they're fresh and you can try other varieties that you just don't get in the supermarket or take away fast food places. You can grow a ton of potatoes and store them for a long time. And like I've already said, potatoes are a nutrient dense food, which is one of the reasons why the potato has become one of the most important foods on the planet, because it literally prevents starvation. You grow potatoes from potatoes, and it's as easy as bunging a potato into some soil and digging it up three months later to find it multiplied. There are lots of potato substitutes, and I've tried many of them, even sweet potato, but nothing grows, cooks, feels, and tastes better than a potato potato and that's why the potato is my number 10. What do you think of my list of 10 vegetables that you should always grow? Agree, disagree? What would you include or remove, swap out instead? Whack it down in the comment section below. I'd be interested to read them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and share the video around and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so I liked his list, but I didn't like his uh, recipe ideas. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are, I think, a few raw food potato recipes, but not too many. Um, they're kind of starchy raw. Um, you can shred them on top of sweet potato. Uh, Janice has dehydrated them. Janice Welsh dehydrated them and made um, potato chips. Um, most of the potato recipes on here are sweet potatoes. So um. we had uh, a German woman at the assembly and she would always make raw, raw potato salad. But it was a lot of trouble to make because yeah. number one, you have to grate them and then you have to let them soak. She let them soak in water overnight so all yeah. the starch would come out of them. Yeah. And uh, it was labor intensive, but she could make some really good potato, raw potato salad. Cool. 
Um, now the um, the potato salad with jicama on here is a really good recipe. I'd like that one. Um, I've made that one a couple of times. So that's a good choice to have. Anybody else do anything raw food with potatoes? Uh, French fries are possibly the worst thing you can do with potatoes because yeah. of that grease. And um, I saw the other day, I'm not sure if it's true or not, that McDonald's only will get this one certain kind of potato because they don't want any um, imperfections on it. You know how when you're peeling potatoes, sometimes you get those little black dots in there that go down a little ways. And so when they grow them, they have to put this chemical on the soil to keep that black spots out of it. So they're, the French fries, especially at McDonald's are very toxic because of that. So, and they want was, them big so they can make long potatoes. So yeah, Fran? I was going to say, this is not raw, but Gerson therapy, I did a modified version once and they asked people to eat potatoes every day. So there must be some oh, kind oh. of nutrients. I yeah. couldn't because I'm just not used to doing that, but they did have that as part of their program. Huh, and that's a pretty good program too. They yeah. do a lot of the care juice and all yeah. that stuff. So cool. I love potatoes, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the top 10 vegetables. Um, I think I would add, um, uh, different kinds of greens, kale and mm. um, chai, not chives. Um, Swiss uh, chard. Swiss chard is really easy to grow. Tat soy. I grow all of those on my tower garden. Um, uh, parsley, cilantro, mm -hmm. yeah. all those leafy kind of vegetables. They're awesome to grow. So, yeah, and don't take up much space. So. We yeah. uh, we uh, didn't know that if we just put a tarp over those, and even uh, that we could pick pick that all winter, as long as that didn't freeze underneath the tarp, then you could pick out your Swiss chard and kale, oh. and have it in uh, December and January. How do you keep it from freezing? It doesn't. It doesn't oh. if you put a heavy tarp over the top. Oh, interesting. Not until February. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> it finally gets down through the soil and everything. Yeah. Right. But then it, you know what it does? It grows up again, the same places. <laughs> oh, I have to give that a try. I can't do it on the ground though, because the critters eat it, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you might try, uh, you might try some raised beds. That's where the next, uh, it seems like that's the next, uh, uh, challenge. My husband has been working on that so he doesn't have to bend over all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice his raised beds in the video? The, uh, everything he grew was yeah. in a raised bed. That yeah. was awesome. Well, if it was Australia, I wonder what they had to protect it from. Well, Australia get, has the same weather we do, just the opposite time of year. Mm. But they do have some animals. <laughs> or maybe he just grows them in that so like your husband he doesn't have yeah. to bend over as much that's yeah. right yeah so the tomatoes grow the best that way for us in raised beds yeah uh, huh. interesting oh. so anybody have any questions comments for the good of the group Oh, it was great video and everything. Learn a lot more. Right, thank yeah, you. It's kind of fun watching him with his bangers <laughs> and mash and <laughs> listening to some of his uh, his slang terms, chock a block and. <laughs> I, I wanted to get uh, Fran's uh, website. Fran's website. Fran, My do website? you have? 
It's called franslovenotes.com. Okay. Okay. Because you teach raw food, don't you? Yeah, I have. I don't have that on there, though, but I have taught classes at my house. Oh, okay. So what is that website again, Fran? I missed it. It's Franz, F-R-A-N-S, lovenotes.com. Thank you. Uh-huh. And um, thank you, Deborah. So it's in the in the chat if you guys need to look it up. Um, and again, that website with the recipes was cricketlot.com, cricket with one T lot with two dot com. So if no one else has anything, we'll end for the evening. Thanks for coming. Do we know yet what next month is going to be? I know it's early, but. We'll probably look for another video. Yeah, I'm, okay. We're thinking of sleeping. We have, somebody said they'd like to learn how to sleep better. And hmm. somebody else was interested in some exercise. So we might okay. uh, see what I'm everybody so has to that. say about that. Okay. <laughs>